Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's lovely to see you. Now, can you just tell me if this works? Because I can't see from here. Good. What does that say? It's a bottle. Alright. Now, what is, have we got another one? What does this say? There we go. What does that say? Well done. So this is your task for the next five minutes. I want you to think about either a fresh start or maybe just something new that is happening in your life. But your instructions are to, to turn and find someone, perhaps who you do know or you don't know would be good. Feel free to uh, say your name first in case you forget your name and the person can remind you. No, other way around. Say your name. Just make sure that everyone is included. So if you can around, just make sure there's not one person just standing off, the, off to the side and isn't involved. So here you go. Talk about something new in your life or a fresh start that you've had. You've got five minutes. Time is ticking. Very good. Does anybody want to share something new and exciting or a, uh, a new start that you've had recently? I'm going to stay here. Very good, Jan, thank you. Nice and loud. Okay, so it was 2017 and God spoke to me very clearly about selling my house in Melbourne, and I love my house. And through a process of things and words and some visions I had, I knew it was time, and God gave me two words about the amount that I would get for my house, like one was it, and then the other one was like 60000 more, and I got 5000 above that. And then um, I had no idea where I was going, but as I, and I just told everyone at work and I know it was a massive witness, that as I stepped out and faith that God would provide. And so now my landlord is a family from college. I live at one of those flats in North Adelaide. And when he was talking to me about that, I had a picture of this window I lived in Wellington Square, facing north, which is where I am. So I've been there three years, and that's certainly a fresh start, and it's only now, about the second year, that I know that God has me. I knew he had me there for a purpose, but the purpose is coming clearer again. Mm, excellent. That's an awesome <coughs> new start. Anyone, anyone else, we'll give you one more chance just to come up with something. And if you don't, then I'll have to tell mine. <laughs> Can you speak up, Jason? I'll give it a go. <laughs> So um, you'll, you'll have to forgive the mask, this is for my protection, not yours. Um, so my fresh start is six weeks ago, when I was suddenly not here. Um, at the time that you were meeting for your worship, I was having my third blood transfusion in the morning. Uh, having been diagnosed a couple of hours earlier, um, the most aggressive leukemia that there is around. But the reason I'm calling this a fresh start is because A, I needed to stop for the year. Um, I had completely burned out from everything that had been going on in my life. All absolutely amazing stuff, and there's, all, there's a whole lot of other bad stories to look at. I Share that um, now. But in the process of all of that, I have reached a point where I needed to make a decision about where I'm going with my life. And the way that the year was going to work out for me, I was not going to get that opportunity. So for me, this is a fresh start. This is God actually saying, hey, Jason, take a break. And you haven't listened to me, so now I'm going to make you take a break. Mm. Wow. Thank you. That's awesome. I was, yeah, and, and be, just feel in good stead wearing a mask. Michael Jackson wore a mask. You know, so if you feel I need to do some break dancing, you know, move on or something, you do it, brother. <laughs> but seriously, I, I love that present with you. Um, I want to read to you the uh, next bit on from today's reading. So we had ch uh, chapter 20, verses 1 to 10. I just want to read what happens next for you. This is from uh, then 11 to 18. So uh, the disciples went back home. One of them says he believes. And then we're here. 
Mary stood outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in and saw two angels there dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one of them at the head and the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? they asked. She answered, they have taken my Lord away and I do not know where they have put him. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there but did not know it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked. Who is it that you are looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said to him, If you took him away, sir, tell me where you put him and I'll go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around towards him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And later, so Mary went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told them. So we're in the midst of this uh, series called Seasons of the Soul. And it took, I had to ring, because I've been away a bit, and I, I had to ring um, Ross to find out exactly why today's text was uh, about the resurrection of Jesus when we're approaching Christmas. And I was like, this is kind of trying to make this compute and he laid it out really clearly that about these seasons we find ourselves in that that last sunday was winter that that time where life is cold and dark and damp and there's not much light uh, and sometimes our lives can feel like that and then he explained that spring is the time when uh, the days grow longer there's more light in the mornings and evenings there's uh, uh, our plants start to come to life, our gardens start to grow, this time of new life, which is the season of spring. Today's reading is from John's Gospel, and whenever I think of John's Gospel or John's letters, I'm reminded of uh, my New Testament professor at seminary or Bible college, as some of you know that, those so kind of educational places. My professor in New Testament theology, uh, which two other people here probably know of, know of. I won't say his name, you can, you can guess. So um, he was one of, he is well, one of these amazing people that uh, speaks very precisely. Every word is precisely measured. His glasses are down here and he will look over at you. And I remember at the beginning, this is right at the beginning when I knew not much. I felt incredibly overwhelmed by this learned man. He's the kind of respected professor that you look at and think, gee, he's smart and gee, I'm thick. <coughs> quite profound. Anyway, I remember him saying these words at the beginning of uh, his lectures on John. He said, you know, someone once put to me, if I was on a, a desert island, what book of the Bible, if I could have one book of the Bible, what book would that be? And unequivocally, unequivocally, I would say that book would be John. And then he went on to explain why. That John's Gospel is very layered. It's, there's uh, layers of meaning. There's themes that go all the way through. There's the, the apparent, obvious first layer of this is the action that's happening. And then there's these other layers. That what was the, uh, the code that was written to the John, John's house churches, the Johannine community, as my lecture would, would put it. These coded messages about uh, the, uh, the, unknown, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Some think that that was a reference to John himself and a reference put in there. You know that John's community gathered around him and wrote down all of the experience of Jesus and then they put that little footnote in there just to say, hey, that's you, boss. You know? Or is that all of us? The, the disciple of Jesus' life. So there's all these coded messages, there's all these layers of it. And today I want to look at two layers that are present in today's reading. Some have written a whole thesis on these, I'm just going to take two. And uh, the first thing I want you to think about when you think of today's reading in this uh, dark, this, uh, this time of spring, is this. Fight your way through the dark winter and get to spring. Good. <laughs> Fight your way through the dark winter to get to spring. We read in uh, John chapter 20 verse 1, early on the first day of the week while it was still dark. John's gospel 
in chapter 20 begins in the dark. And I want you to think about one thing. Before we get too far into it, um, this notion of light and of dark. The big theme through John, one of the big themes, is this light and dark, this duality. We are reading John chapter 8, verse 12. Perhaps you're familiar with this verse where Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. In John chapter 1, verse 5, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. These things of light and dark. And so for this, the resurrection to begin in the dark is quite profound. Because when you're reading the chapters before of Jesus' crucifixion, his uh, trial, his arrest, it makes for pretty dark reading, doesn't it? It's brutal. Jesus arrested, whipped, beaten, mocked, people screaming at him, punching him in the face, the mob yelling, crucify him, the disciples scattering, and finally that torture of crucifixion. It is awful to read. It is very dark. And so we get to John chapter 20. It begins in the dark. And surely the, someone's going to pierce the dark and go to the tomb. It's going to be the greatest of the disciples, the most proud, maybe the most bold, the most brave. And we have Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. Just picture it. There's a solitary figure punching her way through the darkness. We know from the other Gospels that at, after, at this time of Jesus' arrest um, and his crucifixion, the disciples scattered. And we read in the other Gospels that they were afraid for their lives. They take look what they've done to our master, our teacher. Surely we're going to be next. And so they're hiding in closed doors, barring the doors, are afraid that this is going to happen to them. And I love it that Mary... Uh, she's cried her eyes dry, she screamed herself hoarse, the others are hiding, and she says, no, I'm going to go and honour my Lord, I'm going to risk my life, I'm going to pay my respects to him, I'm going to go to the tomb. That one solitary figure. And it's really fascinating that, that uh, the, the Gospels are... Uh, look at the resurrection event through different eyes. You know, there's an event happens and you've got various witnesses and they all see something from a different angle, but all of them agree that Mary was there first, that she was first to see. And maybe Mary is someone you can relate to. Sometimes as we read scripture, it's helpful to put ourselves in the narrative. If it's a narrative about characters, about well, that was interesting, about um, uh, yeah, where we find ourselves. And maybe Mary is someone that you can relate to, someone who has, the person that she has loved and held most dear has been taken. Her dreams for a bright future full of possibilities have been smashed. Her certainty about life, about her position, about... Uh, their security, that seems lost and unattainable. No certainty, no love, no future. All of us go through dark winter times in our lives. Something horrible happens, something challenging, and it's natural to grieve. It's natural to close the doors for a while. But then there comes a time when you've got to stand up again. There's a time where you need to get back on your feet. If you're not coping, I'm going to go and see a counsellor or a pastor or a psychologist. I saw mine last week. It was awesome. I didn't have any major problems, but I went there and we went over some of the stuff that's happened through my life. And I'm reminded that he's one of the reasons I'm here today. You can't afford things. You're struggling financially. Well, Luther Community Care provide free financial counselling. Go and see them. You can't see a way forward. Go and talk to someone who's been there, who's 
made a way forward. If your dreams have been crushed, there's always a time to get a new dream. questions and there's going to be a test. Does anybody here, does anybody here know the first sentence in the Bible? Can anybody, does anybody know the first sentence in the Bible? 
Very good. Con, can you uh, do your best to recite it to us? In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Very good. Excellent. Full marks to you. Do you know the second verse? <laughs> I'll help <have> someone else. <laughs> <laughs> do anyone know the second verse? Well, I do because it's one of my favourites. Um, and uh, the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. So I don't know. I get points for that one. Right. Does anybody know the first sentence in John's Gospel? Pretty famous. No, you've already spoken. Go on out, please. Excellent. Go for it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Excellent. It's almost like you've heard that verse before and have committed it to memory. It's one of my favourites. Excellent. Do you notice the, the similarity there in the beginning? At the opening of John's Gospel, there's no manger, there's no star, there's no Bethlehem. There is in the beginning. It's quite profound and it's, it's kind of like a sign for anybody picking up and reading this book that knows their Old Testament. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to read this book with Genesis in mind with the first creation in mind. And so you go along and you read, and then uh, if you know your second verse of, of uh, Genesis, chapter 2, Genesis begins in the dark, and John's Gospel at verse chapter 20, verse 1, begins in the dark. So you're looking for these similarities. This one begins in the dark, in the absence of light in chapter 20. And the way it is written, the words that are written there, are so reminiscent of Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, in the dark. And the similarities don't end there. Hopefully this shows up. So we've got Genesis. Where does the action take place? In the Garden of Eden. Who's the gardener? God. Very good. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, my next page. <laughs> Who's the, uh, uh, where does Genesis chapter, uh, sorry, John chapter 1 verse, uh, 20 verse 1 take place? Where does that account take place? Very good, in the garden too. Who is the gardener? That's the question, isn't it? Jesus, or at least that's who Mary thinks is the gardener. Can you see the similarities there? That uh, Mary thinks he is the gardener. Here we go. Thinking he was the gardener, she says, Sir, if you've carried, away, carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Without knowing it, Mary has correctly identified Jesus as the gardener. The one who is planting something new in our world. A new life. Eternal life. A new way to access God, not through the sacrifices of the past, by the, by the sacrifice that has just happened before chapter 20. A new way to live, not um, struggling with God over there and us here, but to live by the Holy Spirit, God's presence with us every day. Um, Paul puts it like this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And then uh, in uh, John chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In the first creation account, uh, in the first creation, after Adam and Eve have sinned in the garden, they leave under that cloud of sin and darkness. But in this new creation, Mary is sent out from the garden rejoicing. She says, I have seen the Lord. In this new creation, she goes out telling people that the darkness hasn't won darkness hasn't overcome the word made flesh. Her message declares 
a new beginning that God has prepared for all of us, a new life, a new security, a new way to live, a new way to love. The, uh, the famous catchphrase from the show Game of Thrones was, winter is coming. Mary tells us that winter is over, that winter has ended. I want to leave you with those words that uh, Jesus says to Mary. He asks her, Mary, a woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? And then Jesus says to her, calls her by name, Mary. In this account, there is a joyful Mary. There is a joyful Mary sharing her joy in what God has done. And maybe that's where you are at, having something new and amazing happen that you can share. Please share that over coffee today. Maybe you're more like a fearful disciple. Something terrible has happened and you just feel like hiding and being safe and secure in a place away from people broken by circumstance, afraid of what the future might hold. Maybe you're the brave Mary, you're like, I've been there and now I'm going to fight my way through this darkness to get to the light. Maybe you're the searching Mary, you're looking for Jesus, looking for something. Maybe you're the crying Mary and Jesus calls your name. How will you respond? Let's pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that winter isn't coming, that winter is over. Lord, some of us are afraid of what the future holds for us. Holy Spirit, draw near and fill us with bravery and confidence. Lord, some of us are searching for something, and we don't know what yet, but we're searching to find something. Lord Jesus, lead us. Perhaps we're looking to find you. Lord Jesus, be present. Perhaps we're uh, feeling brave, but we're standing alone facing the darkness. Give us courage to face that. Or Lord, maybe we're still crying. Maybe we're the crying and upset by what has happened in circumstance. Or maybe we know someone who is so broken by circumstance. Lord Jesus, call our name. We pray this in your name.